Today on the show, strategy plus action equals crafting a winning offer. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. How's it going, everybody? Today, we've got Jay Hossman on the show. Jay works with coaches, consultants, authors, speakers, anyone in the expert business there who's really focused on building that business online and, and helping them, them do that and helping them do exactly what we dig into deep on today's episode, which is crafting a compelling offer. It's, you know, it's usually where he starts with someone uh, when they come to him. Sometimes people are coming to him for that. You know, I need help with my offer. Sometimes they, they really want to shift their, you know, expertise into building something online and building a, a real business around that. And, and this is an area he digs in deep with them crafting that winning offer and there's so many layers to that and i just i I love that we we dig into most of them (laughs) kind of walk through that 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 whole process because it's it really is it's so critical if you don't have that dialed in nothing else really matters you can run all the ads in the world to it you can have all the sales calls in the world (laughs) you know about it but if it's not something that is really dialed in and what your audience is wanting, everything else is going to fall flat. But when you have that figured out, it makes everything else easier. So that's what we dig in today and including his journey uh, to getting to where he is now. I love the journey he's been on um, and, and what he's jumped in and done over the last few years. So let's jump in. Jay Hosman, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Good to see you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you you jumped in here with us. Um, for the audience's sake, we you know we just kind of connected on Facebook, and I had some a little bit of familiarity with you just from from you know Aaron's work that he you know Aaron Fletcher that, that he's done, and you've been such an integral part of of his stuff. Uh, the you know gosh, the last what year and a half or or whatever, and just that. Uh, just that little celebrity effect, which is funny. You know, when I hear your voice, you're behind so many of the training videos and it's just like, oh, it's just a comfort. Like, oh, I know that voice. I, I've learned so much <laughs> from that voice. So it was great. I'm, I'm glad you reached out um, recently just to to connect a little deeper and your, you know, focus, your expertise and, and what you're really focusing on now with coaches, consultants, experts of all kinds, right? Um, it was, it just... I was like, let's get you on the show. Let's <laughs> let's jump in and, and, and talk. And I really want to want to talk about what you're helping people with so much these days is, you know, crafting an offer. Um, and and we'll we'll dig into that pretty deep because it's a it's a big topic, but it's such a critical one to to any <laughs> any business, right? Sure, yeah. um, but I want to get you know a little bit about you and, and bring the audience up to speed in terms of mm-hmm. online business. I know you've 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 had a past business and you've recently jumped into you know back into launching your own and I, I love the journey uh, of what that is. So give folks a little bit of insight from geography as well as the the business <laughs> journey. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Um... It's always weird to talk about yourself, right? I'll try and give you the the, the two minute recap, I guess. Not not um, for me. Like that's for people who aren't obnoxious. It's hard, yeah. But uh, <laughs> like me, I just I'll just I'll do it all day long. <laughs> sure. Well, actually, kind of started out. It sounds like where you were, and that's near Texas. I was born in Oklahoma, of all places, and uh, yeah, I joined the military to get out of there. <laughs> and um, and the military was kind of looking at ways to make a side income, you know selling coffee, selling stuff online, figuring out this, this online business stuff. At the same time, I was tattooing and just traveling around the world via the Navy and getting tattoos as souvenirs and kind of like found that as like my side hustle on the ship. Like what sailor doesn't want like a free tattoo when you're stuck underway. Right. So I was just giving my friends tattoos and figuring this thing out 
and kind of like compiling my my knowledge there. And um, yeah, I had like a, a sudden like medical discharge from the Navy and couldn't really get like a regular job. So I just went all into tattooing. And fast forward there for a few years, I kind of like kept traveling, kept figuring out this tattooing stuff, dabbling in the online business space and um, passing on what I knew like locally to my apprentices and helping tattoo studios get more clients and things like that. That eventually kind of merged the, the online business um, focus and, and tattooing. And we created the world's first online tattoo education platform called Tattooing 101 and um, helping people. With, it's like coaching and consulting for tattoo artists and studio owners, essentially helping them increase their skills and get more clients kind of all over the world. And um, yeah, I did that for a number of years and uh, started studying with, you mentioned Aaron Fletcher, like, you know, studying all of his stuff and other people's stuff and putting it together and making my own models and things like that. And people started asking me like, how I was able to travel and make these offers for like random niches. Like what is a tattoo coaching business? <laughs> right. So began doing like some on the side, like helping them craft their offers and helping them get clients outside of tattooing. Uh, you know, personal trainers and people like that. And that became more inspiring than talking about tattooing. So I, I sold the tattoo education business, uh, gosh, probably three years ago. Started doing my own coaching consulting. And around that time, I um, started getting like a, a more closer friendship with, with Mr. Fletcher. And he brought me on to help him make this thing called GrowthWorks, which is our marketing software. And then I was living in Hawaii at the time and probably December of last year, about seven months ago, he invited me to move over here to work more closely with him in, in our Bend office. And that's where I've been, uh, yeah, for those past seven months. But I, I kind of, you mentioned in the video, like probably the last few months, I was kind of feeling like this, I don't know, just this weirdness about being under somebody else's umbrella, maybe, or maybe going to an office, even though we're still like total freedom, you know, making good money, all that good stuff. But I felt like I had to branch out and, and see what I could do on my own as well. So we're still good friends and partners with the software, but and uh, as you mentioned, I'm doing my own thing now. So, <laughs> yeah, that's good. But but there is just something about that, like to the to the outside world, and and, and more than that, or I think the anyone who's not an entrepreneur who doesn't work for themselves or isn't doesn't have that call and pull for it, it's weird, right? Like, oh wait, you're working for so you. I don't understand the where's the negative that you're doing, <laughs> but but to the entrepreneur. I, I got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I yeah. totally understand. There's just this, there's just pull and it's not logical, but it's not illogical, but it's just, it's a pull from inside. It's like there, there's something more here. There's a, whatever that is right, wrong or indifferent. There's a, there's that calling of just ownership and you're willing to take the, the negatives and the positives, right? You're willing to take the blame. Okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pulled here and I'm willing to, to, to risk that, not even, you know, for the, for the upside on the money, but the upside on ownership and full freedom and just that autonomy. Mm-hmm. I get it. I totally, you know, Absolutely. yeah, <laughs> I get it. Um, so, so what is that looking like now? How are you, because that's a pretty recent, you know, shift and change, right? You said a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing I was doing before. So when I decided to move over here to Central Oregon, uh, we agreed that I would pause my my consulting and then come in and you know just be laser focused on our software and helping him with with his coaching and stuff like that. So it's just reviving what I was already doing, kind of unpausing it, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So and you, and you mentioned. Um, kind of your what you really help help folks with too is is what we're going to talk about today uh, hopefully a, a lot is crafting that offer right mm-hmm. um and that's something that i just i'm fascinated with and you know as i dug deep you know realized all the shiny objects all the marketing tactics and the sales tag ta- all of that none of it means anything without that offer that someone gives a crap about you know right. and then and then there's layers of you know it makes it makes everything else easier number one the better that offer is but then there's a level of now conveying that offer there, there's so many layers to it um give what's that step one you know when when you when either somebody comes to you for that or they're coming to you just for help in general but you spot like 
okay, tell me about your offer. <laughs> and you kind of, <laughs> you're dialing in like, hey, let's talk about your offer. <laughs> you know, what is, right. what are some of those, those basics in step one that, that we should be thinking about when it comes to, to just crafting a, a really solid offer? For sure. Yeah. I think you kind of nailed it there. Like you can't outmarket a bad offer, right? There's no marketing or tactic that'll, that'll solve a poor offer. But I think it goes back like even before the offer. Um, and I, I've been here personally myself with previous projects, like doing drop shipping or running an agency or real estate, whatever it is. And that's having like a genuine passion and excitement about what you're doing. Cause no matter what you're doing, there's going to be a ton of work involved. And far too often, again, I'll just kind of blame an earlier version of myself for, for falling in this trap. It's seeing like, you know, I see this guru doing this or this young kid doing this. So it must be easy or like the safe path to like make a ton of cash. But you don't have that same driver or passion. It's not your purpose to kind of go down that path. So I think number one is being in alignment with what you're actually doing. And, and you can sense that people can sense that. Like when I watch your show, like, I can tell like you're passionate about, you know, spreading information, and, like learning more and like you're excited to do this every day or else you wouldn't keep doing it, right? But you see a lot of people who are just trying to do like copy and paste content or copy and paste like an entire business model and it's it's super short-lived. So I think that's, that's the very first thing is, is getting clear on what's true for you. So, and, and this is... I think there's there's some universals we can we can dig into with this, um, but sometimes that's that's the struggle. Some people like, or I'm with you, I'm on board. Like <laughs> I want to do. How do I how do I find what that thing is that's beyond just some obscure crazy hobby that they love but really shouldn't be a business or <laughs> you know they're not going to like it when it's a business you know and kind of right. kind of finding that is there do you see that balance too between the thing they're doing and who they're doing that for that target audience i think there's cuz I, I i see an equal footing of mm-hmm. needing to find that enjoyment there working with this type of person on this type of thing hundred percent. I think it goes, there is a balance, but I think it's easy to fall into the trap of saying like, well, I'm passionate or excited about this topic. Let me look to the market for justification to a degree. I mean, it, there, there is a part of that too with market validation um, and proving your offer out. But I'll give you an extreme example. And this is, um, I studied with a, a guy named Dr. Martini for a long time. He has like his purpose process and all this good stuff. And one of his clients had sort of the same thing, like, you know, I'm trying to be like this X, Y, Z business owner, trying to make this, I forget what it was, like a certain type of business happened for a long time, like many years, and it wasn't happening. So he's like, well, let's look at your life. Like, what do you actually enjoy doing each and every day? She's like, oh, I can't make money doing that. He's like, just tell me what it is. Or I love hanging out with my dog. Like, I love just spending time with my dog, like putting little costumes on my dog, walking my dog around, like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, well, let's, let's find a way to monetize that. Like, what do you do with your dog? Why well, I dress him up. I, I go to the park. People take pictures. I bring joy to people and they genuinely enjoy <laughs> seeing my dog in the park, right? Okay, perfect. Well, the next time somebody asks you for a picture of your dog, charge them a dollar. So she does. So she goes to the park and charges some people. It's, it's so silly, but like charges people a dollar to take a picture with their dog. And then she got more costumes, had them start doing tricks. And it was $5, $10, whatever. A year goes by and this is in New York City. And a talent scout approaches her and says, I love your dog. I love your vibe. I love your whole energy. Here's my card. I'd love to put your dog in a commercial. And that dog became the Taco Bell dog. And they made like millions and millions of dollars <laughs> just taking pictures of this dog, right? I think the point being is that like if she had looked to the market for can I make money selling pictures of my dog, the answer would be no. But because she went went in, went in that, went down that path with like everything that she had, it did become something. So I think that you're right. There is a balance there. But I think it's easy to look too much at the market for what we're excited about, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And and this actually gets into, gosh, this gets to like otherworldly stuff. But there there is a, a, a great mindset around you don't know you don't know what's possible. You don't know what's out there. You know what you know, <laughs> but there is there's a stepping off into the unknown which is that story is the perfect example. And it doesn't have to be that extreme or that off the wall or anything like that. It could 
you know, here's your focus and here's what you know, it could just be right here, <laughs> you know, yeah, sure. yeah. and you're not looking at it until you take that first step and you get those blinders off a little bit. So I, I love that point because especially in this day and age, my goodness, like <laughs> it is, it is, it's never been easier to monetize the craziest stuff in the world, right? <laughs> like whatever, yeah. whatever you're interested in interests are you know to some level and some degree and then of course once you you find that thing then let's let's get some business principles in there let's mm -hmm. craft the right offer around it let's market it the right way let's find your your people you know and and there's all those different degrees and you know sometimes people go too far the other way of just like oh it has to be your passion and your life's purpose and your this and that and <laughs> <Sure. Yeah. laughs> it and, and we're not necessarily like talking that that it has to be this giant thing like that but this is that that level of it has to be something you enjoy like it, it, and, and there doesn't it, nothing we say is a has to or have to be there you, you know you can come up with 10 examples of you know of you know people being successful with something they hate sure but what's their life like right like what's right. and the point and especially the point that you're making is that it's never been easier right to, to go do you know monetize these other things so why not go through all of this that you're about to go through with something that you enjoy, you know, because sure, to your point, like we all, we all have that wonderful optimist side and <laughs> it's, it, it can be fine in the long run and overall, but you're going to go through some ups and downs. And if you're miserable, you're just less likely to take those steps that you're, you're going to have to take to push through on that. So that's, that's certainly step one, like find that, you know, something that's you, because to your point too, yes, you, you know, people sense that if, if you don't really care about it, don't, especially if you don't like it, <laughs> people are going to sense that. <laughs> and sure. we buy so much from, man, I don't know what it is, but I I know I can get what I need from this person. Like you, you get that sense from yeah, folks. So yeah. if, they, if they have that, they, they've identified that, you know, they're either an expert around it already. They've identified, they love it. What's, what goes into making sure that now we're going to craft an offer around that thing that they're passionate about yeah. so that um, it, it makes the most sense and they can be the most successful with it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, maybe it would help to kind of give a more concrete example too. And that's what I did with the tattoo education platform. So at the time there was no online <laughs> tattoo education at all. Like it, it makes sense. Like it's a physical discipline you have to learn. You have to help people like actually make tattoos, right. When they're first starting out. So it's, how do you position that to an online business? And luckily for me, I, I had the, the, the privilege to work. Um, my mentor in university was Peter Rowan. He was the VP or director of something at a uh, coin box, uh, Co Coinstar and Redbox here in the States. He was like the, the VP there. And he really instilled in me like this lean startup methodology. And I kind of like had this idea I was working on, like I was blogging about tattooing and like getting, building up this audience slowly. And I, I took it to him. I'm like, hey, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm quote unquote passionate about. But like, like you were saying, like there's no market for this online. He's like, well, you're building an audience. So let's, let's ask the audience, let's ask the actual market what they're looking for and then make an offer for that. So over the next few months, I went around and number one, I was polling my audience. I was building through my little tattoo blog. I was emailing everyone. I ran some ads to a lead magnet and built the audience up even more. And I had like this pool of people I could actually survey. I had phone conversations, email conversations, Google surveys. I went around off to all the campuses in Hawaii and like interviewed potential tattoo artists, like people who were in art school and wanted to monetize their art skills because I could be like an avatar for the, the program. And ended up doing more than 300 of these little interviews. And from that, I kind of like distilled down like, okay, here's the language everyone's using. Here's exactly what they're saying. Here's exactly what they're, they're looking for. And once it became like an actual like concrete thing, I was like, okay, like I have this. And I put that into essentially like a little one pager. So here's the problems people are having. Here's my solution for it. Here's what a program might look like. Would you pay for this? And if so, how much? Oh, I'd pay this much for it. Okay, 
do you want to put a deposit down? I'll give you, you know, 50% off for the first run of this thing. That's how it kind of became an offer is like actually talking to the audience. I think too often people, myself included in the past, I'll just call myself earlier version of myself out is we have what we think is a great idea and we'll spend six months or a year putting together this, this amazing offer. And then we take it to market and it flops because you're making it in a silo. You're making it in, in your basement, right? Like there's no, there's no feedback coming in. So I think, you know, kind of the, the concrete thing is just going out there and actually asking the market what they're looking for. That's a step I don't think is wise to skip in many cases. <laughs> well, and it's, it's not the fun one, right? Like, right. um, it typically, at least it certainly isn't for me. I love talking to people and it's still, isn't the fun one for me, you know? And, and I think, <laughs> right, yeah. and I think it goes into that category of, well, too bad, do it, um, <laughs> and um, we'll make it fun, make it, you know, something bigger than just that. I mean, you could take the approach of, you know, doing something like that. You could do a, a show around it, you know, like before you have it, and not even publish anything, and then once you're done, and you actually have this offer out there. Oh well, now I have all this content that whether I use it as a blog content or you know just teaching videos or anything like that. Like if if you need that, a lot of times I need that. I need that um, secondary third. You know, like I, I've got to. I'm gonna go do all this work and have all these conversations. Like I I want to I want to use it in more ways than just one. But yeah, that that research side is. I mean, it's it, it's huge. Um, because yeah, that, I think that's the. I, I've got no numbers to back it up, but I would I would say that's one of the biggest <laughs> um, downfalls of the, the certainly the first time entrepreneurs and things like that who it's that silo building of anything whether it's yeah. you know for coaching consulting whether it's online courses or it's a tech startup you know I've known plenty of those folks who just like well I can't tell anyone my idea you know <laughs> I can't do that yeah. right. <laughs> you know and there's a very tiny tiny percentage of folks who that's really true for of some top secret patent level you know kind of deal right. um, most of us that's that's not true you know <laughs> no one's taking your stuff yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. I love that any um, and, and again I love that concrete example too because it's just like, oh, that's how. You, sometimes we hear just customer research, and we're just like, uh, "What does that mean?" I love that example. Like, well, <laughs> who are you trying to reach? Who do you want to reach? Who do you think might want this? Just have those conversations, um, and that's you know. And, and I love that. The more you can do, the better. Three hundred of these conversations stuff, you can get a you can start getting a really good sense at twenty five. You know, conversations. Exactly, yeah. You know, and. <laughs> Yeah. And what's fun, and again, I think this goes back to sort of like, oh, let's make it fun, is that I, I would imagine like for you, once you started getting some of this back, like, oh, oh, that's interesting. I, you know, this insight from this person or that, then it does become really interesting. It's like, oh, the more of these conversations I've had, as soon as you get that one that's like, oh, I never thought about that. I, they, yeah. I never thought then you're like, okay, I got to keep, I got to keep digging. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, so then, good point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's a good point is that once you start hearing the same themes coming up again and again and again, you know exactly what to say to your audience. Like, you know what to put in your marketing, you know what to put in your blog post, you know what to put in your course. I think it's a big struggle with a lot of people. Like once they decide on a topic is like, well, what do I say? What do I teach? Like they're telling you exactly what to teach. So there's the connection, you know? Yeah. So, so what, what are some of the elements that, that make a juicy offer? You know, once you have sort of these things that, you know, people want, how do you to structure that and, and really put it somewhere to where you're driving people to it and you're crafting it in a way that is going to really appeal to folks? Yeah, it comes down to being crystal clear on the result and the outcome primarily. You know, I speak to a lot of people who have an offer that isn't isn't doing well they're like well, what's what's the offer and you, they're listening more about like the deliverables oh you get nine modules and i teach you this this and this and but this that's not people are signing up for like i don't want to watch 50 hours of videos i just want the outcome i'm signing up for so i think it's getting crystal clear on the outcome primarily and it's getting and then it's also having like a unique mechanism like a, a, a different way 
that you're solving the problem. I think that kind of speaks to like, you know, human behavior is like we want something that's effective that is going to either make it easier, cheaper, or faster, right? So what's the, what's your unique way of approaching this that people in the marketplace aren't talking about or aren't doing? And the wrong way to do this that I see too <laughs> often too is taking what someone's already doing and trying to put a unique name on it and calling this a unique mechanism. That's, that's not what I mean at all. So I think there's a, a fine line there for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think having... I think it's great to have um, have the the smart name around it, have a proprietary system of how you get that end result. I think those are, are great because we, we want that confidence that, oh, this is something new and there's a system for it. It's not this, you know, I don't know, like just depends. Like let's have a conversation and then, you know, people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that there's, you know, there's a system around this and they're going to go through these steps and they're going to get this result. But that's exactly it. To your point, it's that benefit. It's that result. Is Does that have to be like, I know this is another area that pe- people struggle in is, is what that result is, how concrete, how tangible, how does it have to be dollars that is the result? Does it have to be a, how measurable, you know, because it's probably hard to sell, you know, you'll just feel better at the end, you know, <laughs> or whatever that, <laughs> right. maybe that's the whole course. Maybe if, you know, if it's a course on feeling better, that's fine. But um, even then it's like, how do you measure that? And how do you make that promise? Yeah, that's the actual sort of like deliverable of um, a measurable outcome. And also what it means for their, for their life and like the impact going to have on their life. Right. Like it's like, yeah, it'd be great to make 10 K extra per month, but so you can what? So you can get your time back, so you can hire a team, so you can afford ads, so you can do X, Y, and Z, so you can spend more time with your family versus staring at a laptop, right? It's like, what's the the emotional plus the tangible outcome? And honestly, it, it, in my experience, it's the more concrete and specific you can be with the outcome, the better, with the caveat that it is more challenging nowadays to say, like, you know, make 10, make 20K in the next 90 days, and then run ads to that. Like, you're going to get shut down super quick or, um, you know, lose... 10 pounds over the next two months or three months, whatever it is, if you're a trainer, you can't run ads to that these days. So be as specific as you can while still being number one, realistic. And then within those guidelines as well, if you're planning to run ads. Yeah. And that that's a good point too, because I know there's still, it's, it's, that's important to be, you know, platform or medium specific, you know, there's things that you can, say and talk about in a TikTok video that you can't in a Facebook ad in terms sure. of yeah. promise and all of that. And and not that, you know, you should be making outlandish claims even in a TikTok video, but sometimes you just know, like, hey, okay, I've worked with, you know, 50 clients, 48 of them got this result. I want to tell somebody that, you know, that can be frustrating when you can't say it in an ad when it's it's so strong. So you know, maybe you find that medium where you can talk about that and just figure out For a way sure, to get yeah. people to that medium as much as you can. Um, what's when it is something that's let's say let's say somebody's you know newer and they don't have those results yet, and how do you how do you find that balance between you know the 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 soft, I'll say, you know, the, the less measurable <laughs> results and kind of putting that in there with, you know, trying to get somebody's interest because we, we do, we want to, we at least want to feel that, oh, I'm going to get this thing out of it. You know, how do you mm-hmm. help people bridge that gap when, when it is something brand new? Uh, do you mean more so if you don't have testimonials yet or? or yeah. Mean? If you don't have testimonials, if, you know, let's say you're, 10 clients in results are all over the place and there's not a measurable like, Oh, I can guarantee you four new clients a month. Uh, I don't feel strong enough doing that. Is it okay? We'll go get 10 more clients before you actually, you know, or is there, is there a way to sort of craft this? Maybe it's a in between offer, right. To get to that point Mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, getting somebody interested. Yeah, good question. I think especially when you're first starting out, especially if it's your first offer online or, or just in, in general, I guess, is generally it's 
the ones I found to be most effective and like these breakthrough offers are ones where you're serving an earlier version of yourself. So for example, like I was trying to figure out tattooing and then I was trying to figure out how to open a tattoo studio and then how to get clients for that tattoo studio. So it's less about like, I'm going to help you get a hundred clients for your tattoo studio in that, in that earlier business. It's more about like, here's how I did X, Y, and Z. And that's the story and that's the marketing. So here's how I did this and I can show you to do the same. So ideally, if you're launching a brand new offer, it's something you already have results with in the past. Um, you're not trying to break into a brand new market um, without those, without any kind of results or, or uh, confidence you can get those folks results for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good point. And, and yeah, you can really, you know, keep your language around that right of mm. hey here's what i've done i went from here to here and maybe just being upfront about that in that stage right like here's the results i've gotten this is going to be a much however you want to state that but this is going to be a much more expensive thing a bigger thing you know right. 10 clients in than it is now but i'd love to you know try to get the results that i got for myself here's my story you know, I'd love to get that for you. And, and yeah, then also to your point, if you haven't even gotten that for yourself, well, maybe that's step one before we're trying to put an offer in front of other people. Right. And I think maybe a more, another concrete example here would be like, when I did have the tattoo education business, I had figured out how to package my knowledge and get clients online. People began asking me like, well, how did you do that? So I took them on like kind of on the side of my, my main thing I was doing at the time and said like, well, okay, well, here's the frameworks and the ideas and the thinking I, I use to make this happen. Let's see if it'll work for you. And so helping, you know, my client, Sammy get to 25 K per month or helping a personal trainer with no online experience, package up all his info from scratch and get to those from zero to 11 K per month. Like, okay, okay, now this is working. And now I have those testimonials because I just duplicated what I'd already done. So I think it kind of builds this this snowball, this flywheel, this momentum, whatever you want to call it, as you prove it yourself and then start teaching one person, two persons, and then going to group and scaling it. Yeah, that's good. And then also like if you have, if you're, if you are in the beginning of this and you're trying to craft an offer, you're trying to craft this offering, um, that's a good step to go through even if you know it's around something you've done is to sit down with it and figure out the systems around it. Number one, you're going to need that anyway, if you start implementing this for more and more people, but also that's, that helps you start developing a framework, which can be unique to you at that point, which is just going to be a better selling thing. So even before putting that in front of someone to start you know, oh, these are the steps I went through. This is what happens next. This is what, um, that can be really, really helpful. And then you can just, I mean, you can start teaching that before client one, if you've gotten those results for yourself. And then the similar thing that you had happen, you'll have those folks go like, oh, that's really good. Like, do you think you, do you think it would work for me in this industry, this industry, this industry? Exactly. And then you can figure that out of, you know, what that looks like from a business side of things. But, um, yeah, it's all about those, those results <laughs> that you can get there, <laughs> sure. you know, yeah. going through and it all, and, you know, and back to the same thing of having a passion and an interest of, of this, to have confidence that you can deliver this thing, whether you've had, you know, a hundred clients or two, like if you know, like I know my thing works because I've gotten at this, like I just need more and more, more, you know, that comes through as well in a, in a big way is that, that level of confidence. hundred percent. Yeah. So any, any, you know, who's, who's, who's that ideal person that should reach out to Jay right now, <laughs> you know, from like, man, I need help with this. I'm doing this and they should reach out to you. Yeah. I, I love helping people who, again, are just so excited and so passionate about serving and helping others and kind of creating that ripple effect. So if you're an expert on, I don't say anything, but like if, if you're super passionate and inspired about something, you're trying to make it work online, you maybe don't have your messaging dialed in or it could be better you want to dial in your offer. Maybe you've tried to make pay, paid ads work in the past and you've had some difficulty there. Um, that's my ideal prospect. 
someone who's inspired about a topic and looking to serve others and get fairly compensated in exchange. Well, this is great. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, so how do, how do people reach out to you and, and kind of jump into your ecosystem? Yeah, for sure. I think the best way is probably finding me on Facebook. We have a private community called the Coaches Freedom Formula Academy. I think it's facebook.com slash groups slash the Coaches Freedom Formula Academy. It's a long URL. But uh, yeah, we hold uh, live trainings there each and every week. I do live Q&As. I give out resources, um, help people craft their offers and get more clients. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. Of course, man. Yeah, great to meet you face to face after connecting for so long on the just on, on text and, and Facebook. So great to see you and great to chat with you. Yes, indeed. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.